11 o'clock, you should have two minutes silence after the pay of the last post.
Thank you very much. Sorry, can you hear me? Better. Yeah. So thank you very much for coming. Even today, that is a wet day. The Remembrance Day is a day that reminds us our duty and why individuals gave their lives so that people like you and me will have peace. I was looking at this, it says to people, peace, unity, and concord. When we bear those threatens in our minds, we will remember why individuals gave their own lives for us to have peace, unity, and concord. My father was an ex-service personnel. He served in the Second World War. He went to Palestine. He went to Burma and also South Egypt. One of the things we always say to me is about never talk about his experience in those places. But we always say he remembers <laughs> colleagues who did he do harm. Every man serving God and serving his country. World War II veteran, RAF, serving his country. The mother country had need of him and he came and he served. And then he returned. And then he was called again to serve a second time, rebuilding the mother country. And that's when they came the second time on the Empire Windrush. My father founded the organization that's now become National International and Windrush is recognized everywhere. And the truth is now being told. 85% of the people on the Windrush, the males, were ex-RAF servicemen who served in the Second World War. Not economic migrants, but war heroes, veterans, answering the call. Again, a second time, give them a round of applause. I'm going to honour a young lady at the front, Black Coffee Rose. I had the privilege of being at the Remembrance Service at the Royal Albert Hall yesterday. And His Royal Highness, not yesterday, but on another occasion, wore one of these. His Royal Highness the King wore a Black Coffee Rose. Can we have an amen? Amen! The world is changing. When we come to our royalty now, I serve the King of this country. But I serve a higher king than that king Amen. serves. I Amen. serve the king Amen. of kings, Hallelujah. Her Royal Highness the Hallelujah. Queen. When she was given jubilee celebrations in this nation such as the world has never seen, there's one thing she wanted to do. Express her faith. Her one regret was that she couldn't express her faith in the way she wanted. Can I get an amen? amen. Does that, are you amen? amen? Can I get an amen? amen. Can you remember Her Royal Highness in this? And His Royal Highness, at his inauguration, commemoration, investiture, he knelt before the King of Kings. And they brought him a book and they said, if you watched it all, this is the greatest book on planet Earth. And they handed him a Bible. Can I have an amen? Amen! Well, today, very shortly, I'm going to share some of the Bible with you. First of all, I'm here to tell you, you see war and hatred, that comes from Satan, the devil, the enemy. There is a dark force at work in this world. Her Royal Highness the Queen said, there are forces at work in this country you have no idea about. Am I right? Amen. So can we get an amen? amen? There's an evil force, and it's Satan, and he's come to kill, steal, and destroy. So make no mistake, we're in a war. You might think you're in a time of peace, but we're in a war. It's a spiritual war. Evil is rampant and attempting to take this world by storm. But I'm here to tell you there's an opposing force. And that's good. 
And that's God's love through Christ Jesus. And I'm telling you, God will all, always overcome life. Can I have an amen? Amen. amen. No, your amen's like, don't believe it. Can I have an amen? Amen. You see, this thing, love, is not wishy-washy. 1 Corinthians 13 talks about God's love for each of us. He loves us so much that he became us in flesh. And then he went to that cross at Calvary and died for each one of us. Each one of us he saw when he was on the cross at Calvary. And he paid the price for our sin, past, present, and future. And the devil doesn't want you to know this deep, loving truth. And I like 1 Corinthians 13. It speaks of love being gentle, kind, caring, keeping no record of wrong, hoping the best, thinking the best, looking for the best in each of us. And then he goes on to say, love never ever fails. And I'm here to tell you, it's not a wishy-washy love, it's a love that lays down his life for his friend. We give great medals to military people who do acts of heroism for their comrades. Can I get an amen? Amen. And we should do so, but we must recognize the greatest act of heroism ever done on planet Earth it's Jesus Christ going to the cross for you and me, for forgiveness of our sins, past, present, and the ones we haven't even done yet. What a loving God. And Satan hates every one of us because he's not forgiven. But we are. Can we do amen? Amen. I'm going to close with this. Well, two things. One, I spoke with some of the officers about the weather. It was raining. And it looked like it was going to rain heavily. And I said, well, I've spoken with God, and I don't think he's listening. It's, it's, it's a continued raining. And look, it stopped. It stopped raining. And I told them when I was getting married, it was pouring with rain. And I said, Lord, please. And you know, by the time we got to the church, the clouds opened, sunshine came down, two hours of sun, and it's coming through. Yeah. I mean, say this with me. With God. With God. All things are possible. Now oh, say it like you mean. With God. With God. All things are possible. All things are possible. I have here, I'm going to ask our black historian. 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 She's a black historian doing war history. Awesome. And I have here the privilege of holding something that all World War I soldiers had. It's the Gospel According to John, Active Service, 1940 to 1980. And it says, please carry this in your pocket. First, carry the word with you. Two, and read it every day. I'm going to ask you just to circulate amongst you. This is an interactive service where you get to glance at and see what this preacher's talking about. Every soldier had that. That was then. I mean, now we get a slightly different thing. But can you imagine going over the top with bullets flying and machine gun firing and, and shells exploding and you're going over the top out of the trenches and you're more than likely going to get killed because everyone around you is and you've got that little Bible. If you're not a Christian before that moment, I'm telling you, in that moment you become a Christian. You read the thing there that you've been given. Just, just, just let people see. Don't lose it. I want it back. You know, let it circulate. Can I have it back? Read it every day. This is what they're given now. This is a modern version. But I think we're disconnecting from God too much. In the Gospel of John, it says, In the beginning was the Word. And the Word is what Christ is. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now we come to the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. You want to understand that? I'm a father, I'm also a son, and I'm a grandfather. I'm one thing, but I'm three and one. And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst men, and we didn't recognize him. The world knew him not because of the evil in the world. We're in a time now where I charge you all, Ephesians 6 speaks about, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of the darkness of this age, just as our Royal Highness the Queen alluded to. I'm here to charge you that God has called you to be in his military. Can I have an amen? amen. I know you don't sound like people who are silent. Can I have an amen? amen? You're to bring change and to bring love and to share God's heart with people 
and condemned satanic behaviour wherever you can see it. I honour our military people. Please give them a round of applause. I have the privilege of a national campaign. When you see these people, please walk to them, shake their hand and say, Thank, thank you for you. your service. I say thank, thank you for you. your service. It's an honour to have you here. With another round of applause. Thank please. you. And I, I was at one event, but we were watching the funeral of the dear child in Croydon that was murdered by the low life, but stabbed a child who stood up for a friend. No gang girl like the newspapers tried to say. A private school well-educated, good church girl, New Life Church, in the choir, and stabbed and murdered. And I watched the service, and they stood and they applauded the police who came and tried to save her life. They applauded the paramedics who responded. They applauded the liaison officers who worked with the family through the most difficult time that a nation's heart was ripped out, and the police liaison are working not just with the family but with the nation. They applauded the police who laid wreaths of flowers with great reverence and great respect. They applauded the police who closed roads and allowed them to mourn in their masses with people like Stormzy and thousands coming day after day after day. So please give our officers a round of applause and say thank you. I'll be telling you a new day this morning. There's new things happening for us. People of God. James tells us, and I have to actually read it, if you want an answer to war, James 4, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure? But war in your members, you lust and you do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you don't ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss, that you may spend on your pleasure. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? You see, the point that's being made here is wars come from people just being greedy, mean, selfish and horrible and pushing on us. My wife hates war. She was with me yesterday. She loved the ceremony. She loved the marching, loved the soldiers, loved the poppies dropping, loved standing to attention. She can't stand war. And she still said, Although I'm enjoying this, I hate war. Yeah, Can we have the cabinet member for Lambeth as well now, please? Thank you.
like Poppy Road. Chairman of what? Dr. Sidney Marshall. Thank you very much, ladies. All the servicemen set assembly in front of the memorial.